Hi, I'm Jerome Raska, and today we're going to talk a little bit about creating somewhat of a topiary, appropriate for the fall season, be it Thanksgiving, but also transseasonal really, because with a little tux of pine or something like that added in, it could easily be for a holiday table for the season of Christmas. So as we celebrate these winter seasons, this is a great idea to create for your clients that are a little bit different, but yet kind of traditional too in a way because a topiary has been around for many years. So first of all, as in any good design, you have to start with a good foundation, just like building a house. If you have a bad foundation, your house doesn't stand up. Same with building a floral design. So today we're using this wicker container and we're going to take our floral foam and stand it, which has already been soaked obviously in fresh water with preservatives. So we're gonna put one block on top. We're gonna to take the second block and where it is scored because the floral foams available to us on the market are pre-scored in thirds. So take one third off, set this portion on top and take the other third and cut it on a diagonal. This creates wedges that will naturally slide down next to the foam and brace that in place. So it becomes very secure. You don't have to use a lot of extra wires and taping. Then we take hyacinth stakes and put them through the block of foam like this. Put it all the way down to the bottom. I like to put a, two of those in. You could put more, but remember, the more you put in, the more it's gonna cost. And in addition to that, as you insert your floral stems, you're gonna be hitting into them. So you wanna be careful. Just put what's necessary. So I'm taking the wire cutters, cutting off the rest of the hyacinth stake, and now we have a very strong foundation. Here's one that I prepared earlier, and you can see how it looks with the floral foam and the uh, um, foam wedges on the side. The next thing we want to do to prep for our arrangement is prepare some of the things that we're going to use. During the fall season, I love to use fresh fruit. You can use red apples or whatever. Today we got some Granny Smith apples. And what I like to do is take my floral spray. Today I'm using rose gold from the Design Master Company. But quite honestly, you could use any color you want. Copper, gold, silver, whatever color accent you want to do. I take that and then I simply, after putting it onto, this is a cellophane wrapper off of some of my floral bouquet products that I'm using, and just simply gild it onto the apple and then allow that to dry. That gives you a nice uh, brushed look that once we use them in the designs, it adds a new dimension to the arrangements. Of course, you're gonna have to make sure that your clients know that they're no longer edible because we're putting floral sprays on it. If you want it to be an edible design, then obviously just don't do the gilding and use the fresh apples, which they can then pull out of their arrangement and consume if they want to. Most of my customers, they want it for the visual beauty, not necessarily to chew on while they're sitting at dinner. Now that we have the foundation prepared for a good sturdy arrangement, we're gonna go ahead and start to apply some of the base materials that will help cover up those mechanics. First of all, we're using sheet moss. It has been soaked in water first. You never want to use dry foam, dry uh, moss, excuse me, onto the wet foam because it will wick all the water out. You want to make sure that you moisten the, the moss first and then place it onto the actual container. That way you're going to make sure that your fresh floral products will hold up for the longest possible time. Once we've placed some moss around the edge to help hide the liner and cover those mechanics, we have angel vine that is another nice product for this time of year that I just simply will wrap around the uh, uh, foam and put on there just to give a lot of texture. You'll see how this all comes into play once we do the fresh floral insertion. But you can see how now we've kind of camouflaged the mechanics and started to make it so that when we insert the fresh flowers, the textures will just show through. Next, we're going to take the apples that were gilded once they've dried and insert a wood pick. We're going to insert that into the apple, really wherever you want, so that the gilding will show, and then start to place those into the foam. Using a wood pick such as this, insert it into the apple, which of course is moist, and then putting the other end into the wet foam. The wood product of the, um, of the wood pick will swell once it gets into the moist product and lock that product into place, even though these apples are fairly heavy. 
once that pick gets moist, they won't they will stay very secure within the design. Next, we can start to add some of our fresh floral products. We have pincushion protea, which are just beautiful. And um, we can, the textures of them is what makes them so great. And uh, uh, people always love them uh, because of the, um, the feel of them. And they're kind of like a little sea urchin, if you will. But they're kind of fun to have within your designs. We're just going to scatter the product about within the arrangement because the whole look is really to just be kind of a mixed topiary feel. There's no real rhyme or reason on how the product will be inserted. Just using your basic good mechanics of inserting fresh flowers in and then uh, um, incorporating into that um, the use of a, a good sharp knife so that your, your stems are cut on a nice clean angle. All the product that's being added in is simply helping to secure that grid work of that angel vine into place. So you can see, as I put it on initially, I didn't do anything to adhere it to the foam. But as we add the product stems in, it will keep the product all in the angel vine in place. The vibrant color of orange roses added in certainly brings extra emphasis to the topiary. And when it gets totally complete, you'll see how the pops of orange really make a difference to the finished product. As we continue to add more product in, another nice product to add is some of the dried hydrangea blossoms. So you can just break apart the florets and add them into place. Of course you can use fresh, but in this particular case I've used some of the preserved hydrangea. I like to work with that since I'm breaking it into little pieces. I never have any problems with it wilting at that point. Plus you can get some pretty magnificent colors that you can incorporate into your designs by using the preserved or the dried hydrangea. You can see how that helps fill it in nicely and gives another yet another texture to, to the base of this design. Coming out the top, kind of to give it a little bit more height, is this a little bit of the wonderful millet that's available. Uh, another great grass that's available this time of year. We'll incorporate some of that and also uh, pheasant feathers. Pheasant feathers are a fun thing to use. Obviously, if they're traditional real pheasant feathers, which are available to us at, uh, on the marketplace, if you take your finger and your thumb and simply run the feather through it, you can manipulate the feather to give it that wonderful plume feel. So when you add it into a design, it really adds a nice dimension to the design. Rose hips are another wonderful product this time of year, and I absolutely love working with them. They can add such extreme uh, lines within a design. I like this piece here. I think we're going to just insert that here on the side and have that kind of cascade atop of this design and come across. So again, giving additional textures, drama, and non-traditional form, I guess, is the best way I can describe it. So that as you can start seeing it coming to fruition here as a design, the little pops of color. Here we have the Grispedia balls uh, that we can add in. Those are also very popular right now in wedding work, but we use them in our everyday designs as well. They're just a real popular thing. Many of our clients are seeing them on Pinterest, and you can see those little little bursts of yellow throughout help finish off the, uh, the, the look of this arrangement. As we put the finishing touches onto this topiary, you can see with all the different textures and all the different products how it really comes together and tells that story for the holiday season. These are scabiosa pods. They're very great for texture additions as well. So we'll just put a few of those in. This rose that we've used in this design is called Confidential. It's a beautiful rose, has a large petal count, and boy, does it open up beautiful. And you, as the uh, client has this in their home and those roses develop, it's going to be phenomenal for several, several days, probably weeks, because of the amount of foam and the closeness it is to the floral product. So just to put a few finishing touches in, we're going to take a couple water tubes here and uh, uh, after filling them with preservative water, we're going to uh, um, slit the tops of them a little bit, cut the orchid stem on an angle, and insert these orchid blooms into the tube so that they have a nice source of water as we put them in to kind of finish off the design with a little bit more of an upscale flower. Again, 
keeping in mind that with so many of these flowers being long lasting, these orchids are gonna last as long if not longer. So you have products that are comparable to each other in the design to give your client the maximum value for that arrangement. You can see how those orchids added into the design just kind of upgraded just slightly to give it yet another perceived value of elegance and beauty for what is gonna be a bountiful and wonderful fall and holiday season. Again, I'm Jerome Raska and on behalf of Mayash, I'm very fortunate to be able to share with you some of these design tips. Have a great holiday season.